Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and tonight I'm going to show you how to paint this gorgeous winter landscape featuring a red barn. Now this is really great because we get to cover a lot of art concepts and techniques here. We got misty mountains, we have texture, we have snow on trees, we have red wood, we've got snow on the ground. And there's a lot of white on white on this canvas, which I know when you're new to painting can seem a little overwhelming because you're like, it's all white. What am I? I don't even know what I'm painting right now. So if you're very unfamiliar with what I do, I teach art and I explain everything I do step by step. It's not a demo. It's actually a lesson. And I explain everything we do, the materials, the techniques, the brushes, everything so that you can paint along with me at home. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He facilitates me doing this by uh, switching cameras, zooming in on the canvas or zooming in on the palette. Uh, helps me see questions in the live chat. If you're here for one of our live streams and you want to ask a question, put that all in caps. I won't think you're yelling at me. Even if you're yelling at me, it'll be fine. I don't mind. I don't, I don't, I'm not that worried about it at all. Uh, so, uh, Tamika Rawl says, hello, John and Cinnamon. How do you get the mini books? <laughs> you come on Saturday. So right now, the 16 by 20 classes uh, have the mini books. They are on the website, on the video pages, or in the calendar, or in the files. Um, if you have a specific one you're looking for, you can uh, mention it here. And uh, it's possible that one of the moderators will go grab that link for you. I say possible because we have a lot of moderators out today. <laughs> so maybe. Maybe, but we would love to get you the link, but you can always find it at www.theartsherpa.com. They're free. You just download them and print them out or use them as a PDF on your digital device. It all works pretty well. So today we don't have a mini book. We are, however, dropping our, I'll get it in a second. We <laughs> just dropped my towel. You should have a towel when you paint. A towel. We're going to be painting on an eight by eight stretch canvas. I use a little rotary um, board, a little circular go round and it really helps me when I'm not using an easel, kind of be able to keep track of my perspective and different things on the painting. I have it taped down. I also have the colors cad red, titanium white, zinc white. This is optional. I'll put this aside because sometimes what happens, and I'm going to show you an area of the canvas. I'm going to do it wrong and then show you how to fix it on one little spot because I, I know what kind of happens to people when they're new and so I'm going to show you a really cool way to fix that using zinc. Um, we've got cad yellow medium, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and Mars black. So it's a pretty limited palette. Um, and we're really going to be staying mostly in just a couple colors for most of it. We like to put wishes and intentions and thoughts and ideas onto the surface. And so I want to say that I hope that everyone tonight is happy and, you know, feeling okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's enough, right? Just happy and feeling okay. You know, I've been watching, um, I guess I'm late to the party. I've been watching Raised by Wolves. And uh, besides that being a really cool show, John doesn't agree with me, but I think it's the oh, most no, amazing I think show. I think it's interesting. I think he it's thinks it's interesting. Entertain, entertaining. And he feels it's tropey. Anyways. I, I think it's maybe a little bit tropey. I'm going to put my paint to the side. Are you, are you adjusting uh, just, me? You know, maybe a little. Tuning, a little adjustments. You know. Anyways, what I've taken away from maybe. that, taken away from that very long series, and I will share with you and how it relates to art, is that sometimes where you're at is special and magical. Like this planet we live on, it's pretty unique. Uh, I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos on the 26 planets we could maybe live on, but they're so far away, we're never getting there unless we do a lot more science. So we have this beautiful place and sometimes just being okay and having shelter and having food and being all right is just the most amazing thing in the world. Probably more so when you're on an alien planet, but that's what that show got me thinking about. If you raised, hmm. raised, raised by wolves, my oldest son turned her, Anne Herbert, Anne, okay, Anne, sorry to shout your name, Anne, I'm totally tripping out that you watched it. I really am. That is not a show I would have said, you know what I think? Because, like, we're friends on Facebook, and I wouldn't be like, hmm, Anne, I should send her this link. So I'm kind of just totally seeing you in a new light going, and watches Raised by Wolves. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's done by Ridley Scott. So if you didn't like Aliens, this would definitely not be your favorite series. You know, you know what Raised by Wolves needed? Hmm. Vasquez. Um, Ashley just... is in love with the lipstick that I have on me. This is Too Faced. And it is 
Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. Sorry. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. Too Faced. It was from that throwback collection that they did. I think they have these on sale on their uh, Too Faced website right now. All right. So let's put in kind of our beginning. Let's start out. Okay. And I'm going to start out uh, by measuring my canvas in half. I'm using a really cool tool here. You know, I had a, a wonderful colored pencil that I put right here and then lost. I'm going to measure at the halfway point, and I'm going to make a line across the canvas. I'm not gridding. I am simply breaking into fours. On simple landscapes, you should be able to break the landscape into four quadrants, and as long as the structures and elements are not complex, that would be all you would need to lay it out. Now, if you print out the traceable or the reference, right, you'll notice that this is bisected into four parts. And what that does is let us sort of simplify, see scale, uh, get a sense of how the objects relate to each other so we don't over uh, amplify one element over another. Because that happens to us a lot as creatives because we're like, oh, this is the best tree in the universe. And I love this tree so much. And you're thinking about the tree and the tree starts to change scale and become more dominant in your painting because it's super important to you. And your right brain's like, yes, yes, tree, 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 tree. And then you're like, I have, I have a little tiny cabin over here now because the tree took up my whole thing. So that's a, uh, that is a thing that you can do to help you avoid that. Now, so if we look at our reference, you can see that right, this right tree over here is really right to about here, and it doesn't take up a huge amount of scale, and I'm gonna barely sketch this in. I'm gonna say to myself, oh goodness, girl, I got a tree. I'm just letting myself know where is tree. The only item I really gotta pay attention to sketching in is the barn, and the barn, I picked this one because it's a gorgeous barn. It's got a little bit of perspective, but not so much that your barn is gonna get crazy on you. Um, Sheila Harvey says, does Cinnamon have different levels on Patreon? Yes, but nobody can figure them out. <laughs> oh, but we are not on Patreon. <laughs> oh, sorry. We're not on Patreon. We have we're our on own... Patreon. Yeah. We, if you go to our website, theartchirp.com forward slash patron, tr spelled in the traditional way, you'll find our patronage where you can support us. And, uh, yeah, we, um, yeah, we, we, we use our own system for many, many reasons. But, uh, many reasons. Many reasons. Many We've, reasons is what John says. Many reasons. Mostly to do with your guys' privacy and yeah, our inability. we like your guys' privacy. Yeah, and if you know, there's a possibility we could work at folks at Patreon, but they would we would have to work closely with them to make sure that we did some stuff right. We should do it right, is what you're saying. If if we were to work with them, it would take that. So. So you can see then, I can sketch in this cabin. By the way, I don't expect you to draw. I also provide traceables. They're free. <laughs> Little things to know, and I actually, I'm catching myself doing a thing. If your roof line up here is coming down at this angle, your roof line down here probably should be coming down at a very similar angle. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit on this side of our roof that's going down a similar angle is a horizontal line. And then we have an adorable, another little cabin roof. They love your hair today. You love my hair today. I love the hair. I love seeing you guys today. You see how we're just doing little triangles? You know, we just figure out how much triangles above the line. And this is just if you don't want to use the traceable. Don't click away if you like traceables. It's okay. Just use the traceable. It's not cheating. I've got a video on how to use a traceable if you've never used one. Mm -hmm. I'm for you. Now, what's great about a lot of this over here is this tree is so bushy, right? so bushy that you don't really got to worry about it. We have a wonderful little kind of bush up here. Comes into this little range on the surface. I'm simplifying out, and I'll show it to you here. When you're painting from a photo reference, it's important that you learn to edit as a painter. Not everything that makes a photograph deserves to be in your painting. And if you look at little fussy bits like this, right, while they're visually interesting kind of in the photograph, if you imagine them taken out, it creates a calmer space from the fence into the barn. And by opening that up, you create a visual pathway into the painting. Wow. So it's a nice place to edit if you like to edit. I like to edit. 
So he's like, once you learn the patron system, it works. So he's like our advocate. She really is because she's she's just so patient with us at our patron system. But I do what I do is I give a lot to my patrons, like a lot, a lot, a lot, because I know you guys have choices out there mm-hmm. of of stuff to support, and I try to make sure that your support of me is at least fun and quirky and extra. So I'm gonna come here. You'll notice that this bank of trees is really sort of down here, and then you have a forward bank, right? And it's below our house a good bit and it kind of comes down here I moved my uh, building where I couldn't see it it's not zoom day so I don't need that screen we do zoom zoom paint alongs on the patronage uh, they're mayhem right now but they're actually a lot of fun <laughs> they have a little bit of mayhem going have you noticed John mm-hmm. and let's make sure we talk a little bit about the snowbank right here you're seeing kind of what is nice about the turntable because I can turn to an angle that's better for me so I am not moving my body I move the canvas a lot of times uh, we do an underpainting in my on my classes but this time we are just sketching in elements I like to uh, change it up so you guys are like man I never know what we're doing and I'm like that's right because there's always another way to do any task there isn't much more visual information you need than that. Drawing on a canvas is so different than drawing in a uh, pencil on paper because all you're doing is doing what's called blocking in, which is saying sort of generally here's fog, generally here's tree, generally here's snow, and generally in the like middle off center is a red barn. And as, since you're painting everything over, doing much more than that is too much. I'm gonna put out some white, just some white. Some Okay. Some white. I'm gonna move the, the picture. And I'm gonna picture. put out some black and blue. And we're gonna start with white and black and blue. Just those. And work on the furthest objects in our landscape. The furthest objects in our landscape is the distant fog and the distant hill that's all misty. Oh, Molly Larson is back and feeling ready to paint. And she loves this one, Molly. If you haven't been here since the beginning of the pandemic, a bunch of stuff happened and some, changed. Some so come stuff. Saturday and see our new mayhem. Mm-hmm. Come oh, Saturday and see our new mayhem. Yeah, check out the new downloadables. They're awesome. They the are awesome. Yeah. Now, I'm going to pull out one of my very favorites, and this is a number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. I think they're terrific. Uh, they make a bunch of mops. Um, I'll grab, however, um, I guess we could just Princeton mop today. Let's just Princeton mop today. You know, because you can get these a lot of places and they're pretty economical. So this is a round mop and this is a round blender. And I think that these are wonderful, essential brushes to have when you're acrylic painting. They're some of my favorite. They're synthetic uh, filaments so that they don't get waterlogged. And here I did it again, John. Oops, I did it again. What'd you do? I, you know what? I'm the wrong shape. That's what it it is. I got it. What did you need? Nope. My mom gave me this thing for a reason. She's familiar. And I'm also going to pull out a small braid. So I've got these two brushes to create soft atmospheric techniques, but I've got a braid to paint in large areas. I'm going to get my braid, and I'm going, a braid is a square brush. I'm going to get my braid and drag off the extra water, and I'm going to load it predominantly with white first. Just white first. And I may even come here and start to paint in this area all through here with a little bit of white on the canvas. This is not uh, like the liquid white that some artists use in oil painting. We're just kind of making sure that we've got a beginning coat, a starting place on our surface. Foaming today. Foaming is when the paint kind of bubbles on you. Believe it or not, they add a bunch of uh, anti-foaming agents to paint. Mm. If you didn't know, that's why I kind of discourage people from getting into, I've got enough of a line here to sort of know where my tree is. So I'm going to let it go. Now I'm going to get a little of my blue, just a smidge, and a little of my black also, just a smidge. We're going to just create this gray, right? And we'll get into our white. We want a very light value. This is so light back here. It is shockingly light. And you'll find in winter scenes, that is not uncommon. 
in your winter scenes, you will have shockingly light backgrounds sometimes. Mm. So I'm going to brush that up. Ooh, Samantha joined our. Did somebody club. join? Yeah. Uh, Haley says she just got a mop. I am going to give examples of when the mop should be used. I use the mops a lot. Mops are spectacular for blending, and I'm going to need to do that here to get a soft transitional background where I don't want brush strokes. Sometimes in uh, certain painting elements, you don't want a lot of brush strokes because they'll stop the eyes. So say I have a lot of brush strokes like what I have here. Mm -hmm. I come through with a dry mop. I can absolutely blend this all out. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. And then I can even come through with just, say I load a little of the darker gray on my mop. I can use the mop, start to speak of this distant little misty cloud area. It's a, almost a little bit of a circular stroke. You can see I barely got paint on the brushes. The surface is still a little wet, and I'm just making little rubbing circular strokes. Just pulling that in and getting that first dust of very light mist. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, there's not a lot of mist there. It's not Stephen King's mist. <laughs> well, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> so you can see we can add just little bits of transitional elements there, and there isn't a lot to do. It just needs to be very soft. If you need to rinse out, when you rinse out your uh, mop, you're going to want to take all the water out of it with a towel. So mops are exactly what they sound like. They carry a lot of water. A lot of times people use them in um, watercolor for that. But in acrylic, we like to use them for blending and leaf techniques and waves and clouds and foam and all that kind of wonderfulness. There we go. Beautiful, soft, transitional little background. Now we also have a hill, right? I'll get an angle brush. Let me see this. You can also use a small, uh, I would do a little smaller than this, but you could use a small bright too. Don't put your brush in the coffee like I was about to do though. Mm -hmm. That ruins the coffee. Now the distant trees, we're going to just take a little bit more of our blue and our black. They're gray, but they are darker than the background. And I'm going to come here, making little up and down motions. And I'm implying this is coming back behind this cloud there. Mm. These little up and down areas are like little trees. You ever done these little ups and downs? Come across here. Everything is still wet. But if I come through with uh, even the mop again, I can blend it. Into the distant little fog. But we can start to speak about these trees that are going behind a cloud. Just little conversations. Little water on your brush. Now I got a little hair here, so I just use my brush to pick that up. Where I want this to blend into the background, I can always come back with white paint as well. I'm just grabbing a little bit of my white paint and water when needed to improve flow. They're just blending this. Mm -hmm. We want this to be soft and in the distance. Just brush that down a little. 
a little more blue and black. Stipple that in a bit. More little trees. These are a slightly darker value than those behind them. Get some a little bit too dark. And I'll dry and show you what you can do if it gets away from you when you're trying to put it in the mist. Because we need these to go back into the mist. And if they're too dark in value, they'll pull forward too much. But you do mm. want them not all to be all blue or all black. You want them to have a little bit of differential. And it can be nice to come through with a little bit of white. And put little pops of that into the background. But we do want it to be blended right here. Now we're blending the edges. And I'm going to come here with some white. And I'm still using my angle brush. And I'm making sure that this mountain is lightening back up behind there. This really is a fantastic winter scene. It's just gorgeous, and what's wonderful when things have simple color schemes like this is they're beginner-friendly, mm -hmm. more than they should be. They end up being very beginner-friendly. I have a bunch of, I have a 20 by 20 winter landscape. I don't know why I did that. I'm just trying to make sure there's some interesting little tree bits. Now, if you need to, and you need to have a little control over your blending, you can come back with a slightly damp round blender. And as you can see, kind of soften some of that into the hill. Things that are far away will tend to have soft edges. Now I'll show you what happens. Let's say you it gets away from you. And that's an easy thing that'll happen when you're new to painting is it gets away from you. If you have a tube of zinc, and if you're gonna do a bunch of landscapes, I do recommend it. You don't have to have it. I just you can uh, keep like lightening it with the white, doing what I showed you. I just want to show you this other technique, just in case something goes wrong. So, you just got to make sure you thoroughly dry between those to make sure that you don't uh, drag any of the mm -hmm. wet paint. Just making sure you thoroughly dry between doing that so you don't drag any of the wet paint. <laughs> yeah. So this is zinc white. This is a transparent low tinting white. It is not uh, just a thin titanium white. Titanium white's a wholly different pigment and they perform a little differently. Zinc white's really actually kind of a, a much older color. Um, it got a little bad rap with oils because it crazes, but it doesn't do that in acrylic in any way. So I've just loaded up a little of the zinc white on here. And I can put these back into a mist very easily. By glazing, that's whenever you put a transparent color over something. Mm -hmm. These items, look at how they get pushed back. It's just a little bit. If you get an edge that you feel like is too sharp or there's too many brush strokes, you can come back also that way. And I can come up from the bottom and even create almost like another layer of cloud or mist. I'm just using a round blender and I'm just doing a irregular circular stroke and I'm trying to not make, um, you know the monolith? I do. The one in England where they put the swirly patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. It would show it up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Shut up. It, sh it just keeps showing up. If you're not following the monolith, you must it's, join us. It's a phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon. If YouTube gives us another emoji, it might have to be a monolith emoji. A monolith emoji. So can you see how we push that way back into a mist? It looks almost like a watercolor, but we've done that with acrylic. And we didn't stro uh What do I mean? Kathy Wood asked a really wonderful question. What do you mean by crazes? I mean glazes. My mother told me to enunciate, but I didn't learn. Mm. So a glaze is a transparent color 
or a, a layer of color over something that's dry underneath. You can do it in watercolor and acrylic and in oils. You'll hear that term in all three. Um, but in all of them, what they'll have in common is what's underneath is stable and dry and a transparent layer of paint or color goes over the top. Works in any of them. Gotcha. I teach watercolor too. I don't teach oil. Hmm. It's not my medium. That's okay. <laughs> it's not. By the time I like it, a tube of paint is $600, so I realized it's not for me. No, that's true. Like, by the time I'm excited about oils, I'm like, Michael Harding, it's a $600 tube of blue. I'm like, I'm over it. I'm a movie. I'm going to continue to bring down a little white, fresh white here, because we've got another little kind of run of distant trees, right, that are happening a little closer, so they can be a smidge uh, more defined. And these back here. But again, we're just stippling the little angle brush up and down. If you're painting at a table, I highly recommend that you use short handled brushes. Because then you don't poke yourself in the eye. And you go, but your official art sharp brushes, these little suckers have very long handles. When I designed them, I painted almost exclusively these. Mm -hmm. I'm working on something now. for us for the table table time hmm. so now we have that next little run of irregular shapes that implies trees we're going to blend it again down pretty easy pretty doable right little blends and then you just come back with maybe other little sharp edges and that just puts them a little more forward you can see they look a little closer than these in the mist but they're still far away I am then going to paint in what's the next layer. Interestingly enough, the barn is the next layer. So let's put out some red All right. and some yellow. Hmm. You looked at me? I'm just looking around. You're just looking around? All right, what are you doing? Don't look around. <laughs> just easy. You can look around. I'm going to keep using this little angle brush. Sometimes when I get into a brush, I'm going to take a little of my black into my red. If you watched how to make brown, you already know this is a great way to make brown. Now, the barn absolutely goes off to the side. Uh, a lot of it is behind this bush here and some mist. So we're going to just paint this down, but we're not going to worry about what's happening over here too much because it's behind too many objects to be that detail oriented about it. Uh, it was suggested that we put something on the barn. Um, some people had suggested a wreath, uh, which I could do without a reference or a quilt, which is a risky business, but I'm willing to do, but I don't know how good it will come out. <laughs> but yeah, or bow or or you could have the opening in the bar. I'm good with any of it. I'm going to just get that layered in. You can see we go over some stuff. We want to go into the snow, even though we're going to come back with some snow. And let's come around the side. With some more of the brown and red coming around that side. Right now, we're just getting that value in. Put a bale of hay in the open window. <laughs> mm -hmm. What colors were used on the trees, asks Elizabeth Tuning. The trees are phthalo blue and Mars black. Uh, we have a little bit of titanium white in there to gray it out. And then over the trees, we did a little bit of a zinc glaze, but that was optional. That was just a way to show you how you could push objects that were too bright back into the distance. I'm just kind of darkening it over here a little bit. Now the top is a gray, so we're just going to make a nice gray. Okay, nice gray. 
and come on the top. And what we're going to need to do is figure out how to take a value and pull this. From the background. Picking up some of my red, but that's actually to my advantage. So I'm not going to fight it. Because I'm wanting to make it seem very slanted down. Sometimes if I look at things from another angle, it'll help me see something I'm missing. I'm going to go ahead and come down this side as well. Now this side is much darker. So it's much easier. Top of the roof has a bit of a dark value, so that's helpful. And we're going to pull down almost like a weathering, if you can see. Just pulling it down. This paint is wet. This has got black. It's got white in it. It's picked a little bit of the red and black up from underneath here. And sometimes that's what painting is, is just relaxing into what's going on. If this side of the barn gets away from you, rinse out your brush. And just come back with a clean, damp brush. And you can see you can trim it up. Trim it up. Now I'm going to come here on the edge. Sort of just tap a little bit of the black along the edge. As you do. Mm -hmm. Pull a little bit underneath this part of the, the barn here. I'm going to come under here. With some black. And pull some down. Did you see? I did, I wasn't reading. So what it, were they like? Did they have any suggestions on what to put on the barn? Uh, was it a wreath or a quilt a or car? A, no, no, no. I'm not just suggesting random things. Do you want a bow or a wreath <laughs> or a quilt or just the opening with like I, a light? I, I, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what you feel like as you get there. <laughs> just a car. A unicorn! I mean, it's anything. It's art, so we can put anything we want in the barn. You could We're not limited. However you like. You could put a horse in the barn. We could put a horse in the barn. But if the barn door is open, it may be no point. It's true. These would be little distant horses. Because you have to scale them to the barn. Mm -hmm. We're going to add another little layer of the red. And we're noticing that we're pulling these colors down, even if we brighten them up a bit. Like I add a little more red on this mix and I'm pulling them down. We want to do this because that creates the sense of weathered wood that's running. Mm. Now here on the side, we're going to do kind of a brighter red that's defined. And that's going to help. Make this part be the front of the barn very instantaneously, and the other part be kind of the side back. Now I'm going to do a similar thing here, interestingly enough. Similar little color scape, and I'll put another little roof on it. Oh, people were saying quilt wreath. I was like, put a bow on the tree. I love it. Beth is like, as is, uh, as is, can you, you count them up. You count them up. I'm willing to bow or tree the fence, the, any yeah, of the things. The I fence like actually would do a nice thing. The fence, the fence would hold a nice bow. Beth likes it as it is. And Beth likes it as it is. And then a wreath, I like, kind of like the idea. You do a wreath and bow. We could do some we'll stuff. See. We'll see. We'll take it there and then we'll zhuzh it. How yeah. about that? We'll That's take it good. to the complete place. That it's like the photo, and then I'll say, but what if you want to just zhuzh it? And if All I'm right. not completely exhausted, we'll zhuzh it. Okay. How's that sound? That sounds like a zhuzhing. Zhuzh. A very technical term in art. <laughs> I zhuzhed it. <laughs> Tammy's got a whole vision. All right. Mr. Ed is in the barn ordering delivery from Domino's. Tammy is an artist. She's thinking like an artist. She's making commentary on COVID and everything. She could enter that in a show. So we're just putting another little 
uh, roof there very loosely, just kind of roofing that up. Now, if I have to come back and sort of define this side of the barn, I don't have to worry too much because remember, we've got a lot of tree coming up here. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of tree to be forgiving. And I have to line this kind of roof line up with the other roof line, just real quick. See how they're kind of the same, same, same? That's what we're trying to do. Same, same, same. Annette says, hi, John and Cinnamon and everyone else. And uh, Candy Williams is like, what about, uh... wait, I'm sorry, Patty Hoffman's like, Mr. Ed uses DoorDash. <laughs> All right, guys, we are doing so good. This is so weird. It doesn't think anyone is there for me. <laughs> it's like, you're alone. All right. So we get this kind of general sense of things in and it does need to dry. And while it's drying, we can paint in certain things. I am gonna wanna dry it with my hair dryer. So any like other things that I put in won't really show. So let me dry real quick. All right, real quick. Get that dry layer so you can do the All right. I'm gonna take a little bit, uh, I'm gonna go along my roof line with a little bit of a gray mist. I take my black over here and I'm gonna deepen my mist for a second. I'm using my zinc, my number 12 Princeton Round Blender and Mars Black. What we've got going here. And we're going to just along this roof line sort of deepen the mist. And we're gonna do that so that I can make the roof line much whiter. And I'm using my zinc so that I can make this soft as if it is part of, let's get a little blue into that and a little gray. It's a nice mist color, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind of a glaze too. But this little layer here will let us really lighten the roof, but still have good contrast and still keep the painting desaturated. It's a journey, guys. Where I've got to soften a hard edge like that, I just come back with my brush damp and clean. And look, I can soften and blend that right into everything that's here. Isn't that amazing? Wow. It's like rouging. It's very similar to the rouging that you see in oils. It's not rouging, but it's like, let's call it rouging's cousin. Rouging is um, pretty much what you think it is. It's, it's deeply dusting in a color into your surface to tone it one direction or another, kind of like on your cheek. Oh, my goodness, Patty, thank you. He, she says that you did a, a, a color shift PSA and shifty colors. You know, it's so funny because Golden was like, you know, because um, believe it or not, all the art companies watch all the YouTubers because we cause them so much trouble. <laughs> and I think the last time they were talking to him, they're like, you know, Color shift on golden paint is not that bad at all. <laughs> you but seem I, very concerned, and we want to assure you that we don't get deep color shift. We just acknowledge it as an art thing. And I'm like, yeah, we weren't saying golden has color shift. We were just saying color shift happens. Color shift happens. Shift happens, guys. I don't know what to tell you. So can you see how we kind of missed it up above the roof? And if I do that, then I can come back with, say, a little bit of my white. I would we'll say, oh, just a bit of my phthalo blue, which is just gorgeous. It pops on this canvas. It's like super bright. And come here to the edge because I want it to have a nice edge. I can put a little snow. This is a dry brush. And I'm going to turn this this way. I just want to be able to very lightly drag my brush on the roof. And it's just got some nice snow now. And we didn't lose the roof line to the value change. I'm going to do a similar thing here. I 
Add a little bit of snow right there. So it's just a little bit of snow. Mm. Acrylic says the letter E. So I guess today's painting was brought to you by the letter E. E for everyone. Mm. E for exciting. That e is. for we're going to paint an evergreen tree. I have kids. I can do this all day. <laughs> Nobody control me, man. I have an eight-year-old and... <laughs> 10 year old and a 16 year old i'm broken in my spirit before i ever get here man <laughs> no my kids are good kids <laughs> but parents know what i mean right you're like yeah internet i hear you but my 16 year old already ripped my heart out of my chest and threw it down the hill <laughs> i'm a very good girl my daughter's a good kid uh okay um uh, at Tammy Edwards, it says, LOL, and oh, I see Patty Hoffman is using our custom stickers. This is the benefit of channel membership is you get our little banner <laughs> stickers. <laughs> but, but Carrie Swear says, hi, everyone. Jumping in late. OMG, your hair rocks, and she's sending me love hearts. I love it. Let's create a deeper value back here. We're going to take a little bit of our uh, black and our blue, and we're going to come here and... Put in some deep value, kind of low, because I've got to put in this tree. I don't want to do all the tree, but I want to get this in deep right here. And I'm going to then blend up with a white so that when I put the tree in, I will be like nice and blended and it will be transitional see i'm just using the brush and creating a little bit of atmospheric perspective mm -hmm. more white creative girl of color with daniel b says teenagers are special they are man i i love my daughter and she sees the world in a way it's so fresh and amazing you know I'm just worried sometimes that when she rolls her eyes up in her head that they may not come back. I think that's something that all, all, all I think my dad talked about that experience with me. Yep. <laughs> when he was talking to you, he was like, they don't, they just roll their eyes. You just can't stop them. It's true. All right. So this color here that you see me doing is really about making sure that when I put the tree over everything, which I'll, it will really cover most of this, that there's a nice value that it pulls. So if there's any little branches showing any weird way, mm. we've got uh, nice stuff underneath. Now I'm going to take my white and a little of my blue black. It makes kind of a gray, a blue gray. And we're going to come here in this initial kind of range and bring this down here. And I'll pull that forward. So we're going to pull some snow forward. Snow is very rarely white. The winter landscapes do tend to be desaturated. Mm -hmm. And often are beautiful, stark, black and white expressions of, of value. It's really quite amazing. But you can see as soon as you get that front thing in of snow, it starts to immediately feel like snow. And that's about the value. That's your brain going, what? It didn't grass. Uh, I love reading the chat. OMG says here, the background is so beautiful. The foreground is going to rock in a minute, so too. <laughs> We're going to really get the foreground in a second, too. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my red and add some little yellow to it. I'm going to come along here. This is all going to be very dry brushing. I'm dry brushing here, and I'm going to just dry brush this down. And this is going to help me get this weathered wood effect. The wood here is several, uh, like, colors. If you look at it, it's super colorful. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be kind of colorful in your wood. I'll add some bright pops there so that the so that this really comes forward. And 
And I'll do a little bit of my black and red again, just making sure I have a nice dark red for the weathered area over here, but it is just as, you know, considered and everything. Coming here into this bit. And then it can be nice because this also has a shadow to show the shadow here. And I'm just coming in on the edge with black and you see create a little shadow. And create a little shadow. And that mm. can have a little window on it if we want it to. If you want it to. And I'm going to pull, I think I got my snowbank like a little too snowy. So I'm going to pull that snowbank back. I'm going to subtract some snowbank from my roof. I'm going to leave at least that amount of snow bank. Uh, Cinnamon, do you have a favorite blue for snow shadow that's pretty much the bomb every time? I Ithridone blue. I don't use it on the show because it's a really uncommon color and it very rarely comes in sets. And I know a lot of people get gifted sets like the first time they come paint with me. They got that set of 48 something. Uh -huh. And so that isn't always in there. Uh, Prussian blue can be really fantastic. Um, if it, I really like phthalo blue and gray as well. So there's a bunch, there's some options, but if you're talking about like just a straight blue, that is a crazy blue. It's so deep. It's like the deep of space. It's the deep of Arctic. It's just wonderful to have in your, in your painting. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, okay. So Janine, hi Janine. This background is gorgeous. Came in late. We'll have to rewatch beginning. My 16-year-old teen's first driving day on a real road. I may not recover. We're all with you. <laughs> We're all with you. I'm yeah. almost, okay, so like, no, guys, I'm not glad that COVID happened. But there are moments when I feel kind of good about COVID because when my daughter was like, it's time for me to get driving lessons, I was like, no, it's not. COVID. <laughs> all right, I'm going to get some black. And I'm going to load it on what is a number two bright. This is long-handled. I'm using this brush because it's going to let me put in some squares without working too hard for it. Hmm. And I like to sometimes have squares where I don't have to work so hard for it. Now let's get in here. This is kind of like a gray weathered wood. And we're going to say, all right, right here. It's like the beginning of maybe like a door down there. It was just the black and white. We're just dry brushing it down. And that's going to give us a bit of the, uh, the sense that, oh, there could have been an opening. Because these probably slide to the side if I see the runners there. Mm. They're slide to the side kind of a thing. Maybe uh, do another little kind of. Always interesting to see like the little openings on a barn. But I think up top, yeah, I'm going to do something else. I'll do something else. But these are important to indicate that there's, uh, there's woodness. It is not just a weird red structure. I'm going to add a little bit of a light edge. Just some of it. Just to say, oh, oh. There's framing. It's loose framing. And these are far away, so you don't have to, like, really, really stress yourself out. And I may dry brush some of this gray over my wood. But notice it's very dusted, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And that creates a nice weathering as well. So I have this bright red barn, but I've kind of desaturated it in a different way by going over it with a dry brush. Gotcha. Uh, you could use a flat, uh, uh, but Lewis has a very good question. Why a bright, not a flat? Flats are wonderful brushes. There's nothing wrong with them. They are often about twice the length out. When you talk about brushes, brushes come in lengths out. No standards, of course, but just generally from the ferrule to the toe of the brush. When you want a firmer brush that has a sharper edge and a tighter spring, you want that to be a shorter length. Those with square shapes and a shorter length are bright. Hmm. Shorter the bright, firmer the brush. Oh, this is looking super good. I'm super happy with this. I'm going to come here and kind of go over some of my snow here with a li slightly lighter snow. And my brushing seam come right here. And I'm going to just 
dry brush a little bit of slightly lighter snow. It's not a heavy and it's got a bit of blue in it. We're not doing white. We're just making sure that the snow has a couple of tones to it. Snow is, it sometimes will feel like snow is always like one color. Snow is very rarely one color. Snow has a lot of little values of different hues and colors. Just when you think you have a handle on the snow, it says no, you don't. So you can see we've created a little bit of texture and element there that lets you really kind of capture that. And I may come back here with my misty gray and make sure that I've got this at a nice angle for when I put the tree in. It is okay to adjust what you have. I'm going to use this brush to blend that out, soften it out. If you ever need to, you come right back with the zinc. You don't ever have to worry about those lines. If anything isn't what you want, you come back and soften it with the zinc. All you get is more foggy, awesome perspective. See how that cleaned that up? All right, mm -hmm. this gorgeous tree. I love this tree. This tree is like, it's just everything, this tree. And it's just a great tree. It is. I feel like for a tree like this, hmm, I don't think it really requires a fan. We could do a fan. A fan brush would be okay. But I think I'm going to do a bristle brush. Well, I know I'm a fan. <laughs> and I'm going to put out a little bit of my green. This green is super dark, so I'm going to also put out a little bit of burnt sienna. All right. This is not a saturated green, and at no point do we get a bright green. It is visibly green, but not brightly green. Yes. I am going to change my water out because my water is so dirty. I'm going to get clean water. Now, and... Pat was asking, yes. what exactly does the term desaturated refer to? Okay, so everything in Disney is saturated. Okay. Uh, all cartoons, um, all Lisa Frank posters, those are all me... super saturated. Desaturated is when all those hues are grayed mm -hmm. out and they're not as visually bright to your eye. I can show so this like, on the screen. Yeah? Desaturate yeah. me. Okay. Actually, uh, what I can do is to the screen that you're looking I'm, I'm at. I'm loading can... up some phthalo green and burn sienna onto a number six Cambridge. Yeah, I can do I'm going to come up just a bit above my trees here. Whoops. And I'm going to kind of tap in some basic shape. I'm going to grow my trees straight down. Because I do want to leave this little area there that kind of comes in. All right. So now, here we have the Sherpa. Sherpa? She is currently, the Sherpa is currently saturated. saturated with colors. But if we desaturate her, let's see here. I'm so desaturated. See, she has very low saturated colors. There's, and then <laughs> we bring her back up to her normalness. Hello, Sherpa. That's her. And then we oversaturate the Sherpa, and she becomes, oh, super glowy. That's where the colors are too high. So there we go. There's the normal Sherpa, and that's saturation. So I'm going to say that this tree has some very beautiful and distinct shape. And so I'm going to make a little effort to kind of maintain some of that because it's such a unique tree. And who doesn't love a unique tree like this? So first, I'm going to paint the shape of the tree and its contour lines. Right? I'm not going to worry about the interior details of the little branches. Those are going to come as I create highlights. Right now, I'm going to just make sure that the basis for the tree, and I really need it to be quite a lot more burnt sienna than green. Mm -hmm. For it to feel like winter. And these here, these are kind of wonderful. Like if you look at down here, like the branches are really over this part of the barn. So you know where those are going. And they even come in front of this. And down here. 
We've got a nice snow bank that we're going to put up in front of it so we don't have to worry about the skirt of the tree as much. Some of it comes right off our surface over here, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We got a nice little area over the surface. I like this. And come down. See, I'm just doing these little downward little jabbing stroke. You can see the paint on the brush. Burnt sienna, thalo green. It's not, it's not complicated. Paint on the it's brush. Just about knowing what you're doing. Now, the tree itself had this wonderful sort of inward area where it was very light on the right side, and that's where we saw like a lot of the green. So I definitely want to play with that and even kind of have some of those interior defined little branches that were a little more upward. You know, trees have characters. And if you've got a really wonderful, very specific tree, a tree that's like, like everybody knows because the tree has such a wonderful shape, go for it. There's some really wonderful, famous ancient trees in the desert that are worth painting as they are. Um, what is the brush? It is a number six Cambridge. I use Cambridge a lot. I'll tell you what's positive. It's a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments. It's got a nice length out. Um, from there, and it's got a nice weight to the handle. What's an issue is the ferrules can sometimes get loose, sometimes. And um, as you paint with these, they will wear down over time. All hog bristle brushes will wear down with use. Not your synthetic. So if a brush company is like, synthetic brushes are wearing down with use, you're like, nah. I mean, like, unless you paint as much as me. And actually, I've painted, I'm telling you what, I very rarely wear down a synthetic brush. <laughs> They're much harder to, to wear down. So now we have this great shape of this wonderful tree, the basis of it, and I'm going to make it quite dark. I'm going to make sure my paint on here is ample and deep, and reeds is a very deep color. It'll have a slight green read to it, but it is going to be reading is a very deep color. Right. Because it's winter, mm. and as winter, it cannot be bright. So that's looking wonderful as we get our little tree in here. And you just, you know, fill it out where you need to fill it out, right? That'd be really wonderful when I put snow on it. Right now, it looks oh, yeah. like a strange green snake. Okay, can you make my coffee? I certainly can. Can you retighten a ferrule? Yeah, you absolutely always can. So, if your ferrules get loosened, uh, you're going to want to go by the woodworking store, and you're going to get something called CA glue. It's basically a better super glue. You can use super glue, but CA glue won't loosen. It's what you use in pen turning. And uh, you'll clean it all out, make sure there's like nothing in there, kind of like debris, and you can see where it is. Get it lined up, and then you just drop the CA glue down in it, and it will seal back up and be good for a long time. And you can retighten them as much as you need to. Or if you have the crimping tool that does brushes, you can recrimp them as well. So you can re glue and recrimp. So what happens is that brushes are wood, and if you put them in water, oh, wait, all the brushes go in water. I know. So if you put them in water, as you do when you're painting, uh, the wood is always swelling and shrinking. And that process uh, is damaging to the crimp. And then also the glues, by the time, if a glue is super good and super not water soluble, it's also apparently not allowed in the United States. And then Suzanne B says, I'm guessing bristle brushes are good uh, for, um, uh, for scumbling. They're amazing for scumbling amazing for scumbling uh and then i love it people are like how do you say peace in turkish and that's something john would be super interested in so let's put in a little bit of our detail over here while we're letting this dry so that we can get into that and i'm going to actually interestingly enough get into my angle brush again i might do a smaller angle but i am going to do an angle um i'll just same size this is again half inch angle I'm going to wet my brush and I'm going to put on a little more burnt sienna, but this time I'm going to put it up on my black. And we're going to put in some of these very busy um, bristles that are happening over here. So take your burnt sienna and your Mars black 
together. I'm going to add eh, about a drop of water, enough so that the flow is good, but I haven't lost any of the depth of pigment. I'll make sure it is loaded on the edge. And I'm going to come here and start to put these little twig bits up. You can absolutely zinc this back if you want to, but it's a very busy bush. So it takes a minute here to get enough layering. And then we have to put a little snow on it because it decided to, you know, be like that with us. It'll come down about this space and it's really going to cover up this little area of the barn. So you'll have to make the twigs quite involved here. Because remember, we're editing so that we have a nice path to the barn. We can even put little footsteps to the barn if we want. So remember, sometimes you'll see a beautiful scene and then there's like a trash heap next to it. And you're like, man, if it wasn't for that trash heap. And then you're like, dude, just don't paint the trash heap. Right? Um... Pat Howard says, thank you for the great visual uh, explanation. Steffi Jane is like saying, use the code. Um, uh, Linda's telling people how I allow cells. And Tammy says she's going to spend three days watching this again, copying the painting and listening to everything said. It takes me a while to learn. So thank you. You know, there's no speed uh, to painting unless you're in one of those weird art battles. I mean, painting is supposed to be relaxing and enjoyable. And it's about your mental process and your calming space. and the time it takes you to find your way through the painting is the perfect amount of time always. And also keep in mind, like, I paint almost, no, I do paint daily, sometimes more than daily. So I was fast before I started on YouTube, but at this point it's just like paint, 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 paint. Even with my talking, still pretty fast. Make sure that some of this kind of comes around here because I want it to be I'm just drawing little lines up. So you can see it's just a very busy little bit of bush. Now I'm going to take my just burnt sienna and add another little layer of bush on my doggy bark twigs in the background everything is good you can see I'm just filling that in but now I have a couple bits of dimensionality that's going to help this bush feel very very worked out and then when we put a little bit of snow on the branches it will really really pull it together the other thing you can do is you can then when you have that basic kind of bush in you can take a small detail brush this is a number one detail And tell a couple twig stories in very detailed fashion. So you say, oh, but you don't have to tell every twig, twig story. Twig story. Twig story. What do you have there? Forward looking at the red. Okay. Was there like a bear out there or something? No. There was a friend who let me his forward looking at the red. Oh. I can't imagine why I need that. what I'm saying. Okay, so John got a gift from a friend, and that's why the dog was barking. So what you see me doing is just picking a couple of twigs to bring out and piece out, and you tell a few little involved stories with these twigs, and it helps the whole story come together. So we've had brown and black for that first layer, and then we came back with some burnt sienna, and then I'm putting some of these little um, darker twigs sort of in. So that, again, super layered. Mm -hmm. Super layer. And just come back.
and add those details where details will help you tell the story, which is what you want. We're gonna let that dry so we can come back and uh, actually I might add some to the top here. I'm gonna turn this around. Oh, we can't see it. I can't turn it around until John comes back. Um, so I'll, I'll do it here. And when he comes back, I can turn it around. So now that he's back, I can turn it around. No, no, it disappeared. So couldn't when you left. All right. So you can see we've just given that some of those little details. And that's, you know, again, sometimes the forest for the trees, you've ever heard that saying? Mm -hmm. Well, when you're paint, you've got you to find that space. And sometimes you'll see all these like lines and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to paint every little line as I see it instead of realizing that there's a texture and there's an essence to it. And you don't have to paint every line as you see it. You can paint them uh, differently than that, and it will be okay. Now, on the snow, I will want more control a little bit. So I'll want a smaller brush if I have it, or I'm going to work the corner. I guess I'll work the corner. I don't see my small. Oh, maybe. I have a couple of these, and you can see I have this one just a little bit smaller. Sometimes when you're doing snow, it's nice to size down. It is. It is. So I'm going to load up a little bit of my blue and white together again. Because again, is a bit not pure white. And this is an example. See how the ferrules? Oh, it's squiggly. Yeah. Doesn't hurt anything. I'm going to come here and put some snow on top of a branch. And then maybe put some snow right here. So these don't show unless they are, unless they have the shadow underneath them, right? Mm. The shadow trees? They have some shadow. They have to be a different value than the background. I got too much blue into there. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Jenny. Thank you. Jeannie. Jeannie. There it is. I have to get close enough to read it. Let's see how I'm pulling that down on those little branches. There's branches that are forward too. You've got to remember when you're doing trees like this to pull some of that into the center of a branch that's maybe facing you. And you don't want to paint out these dark areas. The dark areas are your friend. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I came to paint with you again. Because <laughs> without darkness, there is no light. Tell me that's true in life as well. But I'm going to beg to differ. I would like to try living with no darkness for a period of time. No evil and see how that feels. Do I miss it? I don't know. <laughs> Philosophers are like, it is only through the pain and suffering and the evil of the world that we see the good. Yeah, you know, I'm willing to give it like a minute. Let's just do no more evil for Let's just, just a know, week and a see while. how we do. How about we give it a year? How about 2021 we just go all good <sighs> all year? Just 2021 is the year of, of no evil. None. And it's just good everywhere. And, 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 and happiness and health and doctors and prosperity for everybody. I would like that. Knocking on wood so I don't do anything to 2021. Don't blame me. Yeah. So I can continue to really put the snow on the tree here. And you can see that as I find these branches, well, I find these branches. I'm just tapping up and down. My brush is pretty dry. I'll go back up to here. Sometimes you got to get some blue. little dabs in there it's okay to be mindful now it's a little bit darker over here and the branches don't have as much snow on this side like if I come here I'm in just a little 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 arc of it but it's not like all of it
in a little water on my brush because it's starting to get stiff. So dry brushing is dry, but you will find there's this point where it starts to get so stiff that you can't make it go. Hmm. You have ceased to dry brush and You've you are now sticking. You've ceased to dry brush. <laughs> it's called sticking. Yeah, it's now called, that's a very good, you've ceased to dry brush, and now you have just found the range of sticking. But we do want it to be darker and greener over here, because I thought that was another nice element of this tree, was how that far side. It's so super dark, let's pull some nice tree here. Oh, you've got a nice little branch there. Do you now? Do you think that branch is nice? I do. Are you proud that of that branch? I am proud of that branch, That's a good sir. Branch. That's right. It's, you can. You should be. That's a good branch. I don't care. I'm proud of it. That's a good branch to be proud of. We're just of. coming down there building up that tree. Irregular little shapes. Stippling up and down. And you can see how my brush is just kind of... Dipping up and down. Mmm, Carrie, we might have to go to Nome, Alaska. I go to Nome, Alaska. I've been to Nome, Alaska. I go have to Nome, you? Alaska. I'm yeah, we bad. went on that cruise. Did we go to Nome? I don't cruise. I'm not shark. Bait. I went with my mom, and my and my um, aunt. Yes, I have. Many feelings on cruises. And they fought while we were being stalked by bears on Grouse Mountain waiting for the cruise. Just all, saying. What I'll say is My all, mom and her sister sat there and fought about camp while we we're lost on a major mountain that only has like, we're like, I don't know, bears scat everywhere. <laughs> you knew they don't there believe were bears. me about the bear scat. There they're were like, definitely bears there. Nothing there were so many bears. <laughs> Unless there's just a bunch of people I just kept around saying, in the does woods. Does a bear blank in the woods? Does it? It does. All over here. Shh. Those were just the other campers trying to blend in. So I'm just adding little pops of a of a little more white over, you know, some of that blue white to say some of this is just a bit brighter. Here we go. And a gorgeous, fat little tree. Let's make it a little bit fatter, maybe. Mm -hmm. We can fatten our tree up. So when you're painting, you're like, oh, I want more tree. Guess what? You can come back and put stuff back. If you want a little more. And come back with like a little white on top of that. That's a good looking tree. It's a good looking snowy tree. It did its snowy tree thing. Let's come back over here. Remember we talked about using some fluid paint? On the sticky tree? On the sticks to make the sticks stick. I'm going to push this out. If you don't know what this is, right. this is ti golden titanium white fluid. It is fantastic. I've even got my mom addicted to it. It is the best. Amazing stuff. Um, however, if you can't get it, or it's not in budget right now, because we all know COVID's going on, craft paint will do a good alternative and be a little easier on your budget. I like, um, of the craft paints, I like Deco. Yeah. So very carefully, I'm going to come here and add a little bit of white highlights to some of these little branches to talk about the snow being on them. And there's a bit of blue in there. It's not a pure white. And you can see that that comes in and gives that sense of, oh, oh. there's snow. There is snow. There is snow, and it went on all these branches.
I'm going to come back and put some snow on my branches. How snazzy. You snazzy. And it very quickly just becomes those cool little twiggy twigs. Yeah. And everybody loves cool little twiggy twigs. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black and come right here. Apply another little. A little of this. These are very small. Ooh. Those are little footprints. Little footprints. Because right now, nobody's here. But somebody was there. Somebody was here. And if I put in footprints, then I got... Um, so got a little snow bag. So these are tiny footprints. Are they coming or going? We don't know. And I'll even probably come back over them with a little bit of zinc so that they are super diminished. And then when we put the bigger bank here, we can put some more considered little footprints. So it's actually rather fun if you like that kind of thing, which I do. You know, I'm going to come back and put back in my fence. Oh. Remember my fence? I, I remember the fence. And I don't know where the thing is that I drew it with, so I may have to freehand my fence in. Guys, I'm going to have to freehand the fence in. Free. It's going to be it's just going to be like that. That'll be okay. So I'm going to take a little of my black and brown, but mostly black. And right here. And in some fence. And maybe this little fence can be kind of like this. So we're going to change that scale a little bit so that can be a little closer. Come in and then there's a wood post on this side. We won't be able to place them until we have highlights and everything. So it's a good idea. I'll erase that because I didn't want it there. Mm. I just went back with the damp brush and took out the paint I didn't want. Make this a little bit darker there. No, maybe not. I may put some twigs and grasses and things around that. Mm. Now coming up over, and I'll need some more titanium white, we have a closer bank of snow, right? So it's still going to be a little of our black and our blue and a lot of white at first. Well, let's come along here. And let's start to paint this little bit of snow up front. We'll need to come in with a white highlight to make any of this really show. And little bits of grasses. That's a good... Let's add a little... I do think the bush right here was a lot of fun. This weird little bush. So I might take my little detail brush and give myself a weird little bush hmm. what do you guys think of that i think it's good it is a little hard sometimes to thin the acrylic paint enough on the heavy body paint yeah to be able to do fine lines you may find yourself having to work it i'm just doing my number one detail
And we're starting with like the major structures of the bush. We're giving it some major structure. And it too has quite a lot of personality. And you need to layer it in. Get a little bit of a bush going there, and then I'm going to come back with a little of my white paint. And add some snow to some of the branches on this bush. It's a titanium white fluid. It being thin like that does help in this task. You can do it other ways. It's just helpful. You can see that when we add that little bit of snow to the twigs, uh, Smajillion77, oh, I like that. Find your way through the painting. And then Bonnie's Beautiful Chaos says, nice to meet everyone, subbed and like. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I really, really do. It's so nice when somebody subs. It is. I love it. I love Everybody it. Everybody should sub. Sub now. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> if you take the time, you click on the subscribe and then the bell. If mm -hmm. you open the little bell and then click all. Then you get notifications when we do all this stuff. It's true. As long as you don't turn them off on your phone. That's what you got to do. <laughs> as, as apparently YouTube thinks. I'm going to put a little bit of the brown back here. And across the top here, we're going to just kind of dry brush some of the wood. When I need to lighten it, I might come back with some yellow. You can see that gives me some dimensionality. Dark value underneath, for sure, between the fence posts, right? Mm -hmm. And coming up, it's nice just to give it, see, it's just a little bit, right? Yeah. Maybe a little orange and a little brown. Orange and brown, very powerful. Then I can come along the top and I'm getting a very light blue. Just adding some snow to the top. Of that little fence. It's also a nice idea while we're here in our browns and yellows and oranges and things. This is cad red, cad yellow, and a little bit of brown. Add a bit of dead grass. We may need to get to some black here and thin it. What's ooh? Could be dormant grass. Dormant grass, true. It's gonna come back. And come back. It's got spunk. But just what you'd expect to grow along a fence. You'd expect that. You would. And take a little bit of white into my yellow. 
a little bit of white into that yellow orange mix and catch some highlights on some of them just to make them more interesting. And we'll have to do some of this in the upward snow, but I'm going to get my uh, angle. Well, let's actually get our scruffy brush. Where's our biggest scruffy brush? I don't know. I don't. This. I think this was it. And I'm going to take some white. And come over the top here. Oh, is there a reason you didn't put the the hayloft in? Uh, yeah, because we were talking about doing um, a, a wreath. wreath or oh. something. We can put the hayloft in. So the hayloft doors may be closed. And I may and I may do that. I haven't decided yet, so while I'm waiting to decide, I didn't want to put the black on. Mm. Probably I'll put it in and put something below it. You're contemplating. I'm contemplating it. This is rough, and I, I actually don't mind when it's built up. Zing, but I'll still use it. And I'm coming right here. It's nice if this is a brighter white against the tree mm. that it's in front of. Come back here because there's a kind of a shadow. And if you remember, we've got the zinc, so I can come through and also add some rough snow. Lighten it up a bit. Using up some of this dry gummy paint that one gets when you've been painting a minute. Have you guys noticed the dry gummy paints? Mm. It's okay that it can get thick. If you want to put a little shadow into the snow, come back here. Add a little bit of a blue area, and that'll push some of that back. I think I'd also like to kind of imply that there's a a bit of a depression maybe here coming along here because again we talked about a path into our painting right yes that's just about building those little layers up blending that in if it's if this is a slightly darker white even just slightly darker white it starts to create an embankment it starts to create a little path in and, which actually i think is kind of fun and um let's continue to play with the little footprints shall we yeah Maybe go a little more blue with them. And stagger them because feet stagger. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to push this all back with zinc. And the scale of these footprints to these footprints also makes the barn further away. Yes. But we do want to wait. And the wonderful thing about snow footprints is, is they're kind of just holes in the snow. <laughs> so unlike beach footprints, for which you do kind of need to be foot savvy, mm -hmm. these not as much. But we are going to knock these back with a little bit of zinc when we're done. I'm going to take some of my uh, little fluid white here and come along kind of some of these edges. Just make them a little bit uh, kind of thought out. Okay, while well, all this is having to dry, there's a couple things that we could do. We talked about having a bow. Well, we've painted a bow on a fence, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Let's come right here. I'm going to make a little dot in the center. I'm mixing black and red to get a dark color at first. 
I'm gonna bring in two little sides. Make another little two little sides. And then when we have the shadow of the bow, then we can put the highlights of the bow and it will look really, really good and look like it was there in the reference. Up and down and flick and that kind of makes those little tails feel like they've they've caught some wind. Mm -hmm. Let that dry for a second because we'll need to add some highlights for it to feel like it's a thing. Let's add some little snow twigs. We'll branch up. What's wonderful is these are, these are just broken little bits, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can come here and Oh, there's some little. Little elements of. Little shrubberies. Yeah, and it's, it's sometimes a good idea to add little dark elements to the snow. Little like a little rock and things that are quite dark. Play with it. This also can help you say, oh, this is a path. Because paths tend to get overgrown in summer. Mm -hmm. So playing with that can help get that there. No, I like the darker better. Gives a little more. And these are just little bits of things. We just, uh, we know that they're there and. Now I've got a little bit of zinc, so I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take this little number two bright and I'm just gonna grab what zinc I has. All right. I'm going to push those back. See, so they're there, but they're far. And these are here, but maybe it's like, it's just snowed a little over them. Yeah. So they're not, they're there, but they're not as there. It's been a minute ago since they happened. Right. We don't know where anything is. And I think we will add the open barn thing and put something below it. Goes right across the top here. And down. And then, you know, you get a little bit of your blue and your black and some of your white. Just make sure that some of that is framed. Mm -hmm. And I actually suggest, even though it's pitch black, maybe adding some gray in here. As if... This is, yes, this is dark, this is pitch black, but it goes into a space that has variable lighting. And we do a little bit of the one down here. Everything has reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think so. Now I'm going to come back 
and I'm going to use my just pure cad red and my small brush and I'm going to add little highlights to the top of our bow and let's Put some on the ribbons. Mm -hmm. See how we have a little bit of that going? A little bit there on the ribbon. I like that ribbon. Just a little ribbon. Yeah. And, you know, hey, we have the paint to spare. Right? Yep. We have the paint to spare. For sure, for sure, for sure. So I can come in here and say... I might want to come right oh, like this. Yeah. I'm going to come in because we're zhuzhing now. Yes. And I may take some of that red back because I want to do a set. I want to do a thing here. I want this to really feel like a circle. So maybe there are windows underneath there, but I think I'll have those be hidden. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's just your brown and your green and my detail brush. I'm going to go around with a very dark value. I don't know how much zhuzhing you want to do. How much can you do? There's an infinite amount of zhuzhing. This goes Hallmark card real quick. It's <laughs> just really quick. Take it to the zhuzh. Take it to the zhuzh. But you do need a dark first layer. Okay. Uh, Leon Jace has followed along with the jellyfish tutorial. And Elizabeth turned yesterday. Your mom painted a snowman. This would be great on a larger scale in the background with the snowman in the foreground. Yes, it would. Combine up those lessons. My mom is on on Mondays in the evening. So if you want to do snowmans and stuff like that, you should do that. She does them. She does them. She does all the things. I'm going to come in and add a little yellow to my green. And paint some small highlights on these uh, the barn greenery. Small highlights in the barn greenery. And then I'm going to dry it so I can do more zhuzhing. I like how they pop up. Yeah, they just come out of nowhere, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who does? That's nice, right? Now, I'm going to dry this, and you guys take a look at this, because I'm going to show you how to make it look more welcoming. Yep, especially when using the whites, just make sure you're. Oh, that's what we wanted. Make sure that we get the thoroughly dry before you add your next layers. Yes. So one of the things is, if you ever watched Bob Ross, um, one of the distinctive things, if you look at his collection of work, is that the lights are always off on the cabin. Man is not here. If man was here, he's not here today. But let's add a little bit of our cad red and yellow to some of the area up here. Let me get a little red into it. And then we're going to darken it with black, but it'll make it feel like there's a distant glow. And put some of that right here. Mm. We're going to turn the lights on is what we're doing. Sometimes you can turn the lights on in the barn. Now, when you turn the lights on, you're going to want to blend that out. So I'm going to take my black and red. Make sure that I've got a nice transition. 
in my window and that the lights are subtle as if they're from deep inside the barn. They're just on. They're not shockingly on, but they are on. I hold this in my mouth and come right here. Now this time I may get a little more like yellow into it. I might get right into my yellow hair and kind of imply something brighter. Yeah. And then I'll kind of blend that out with this little corner. It's there. It's something. This one we will go around in black. We'll take our detail brush with our black. Under, underneath our roof a bit and like show some shadows prove some contrast okay now we have some lights on in the barn that's pretty cool yeah but i like some lights on in the barn We're going to get some zinc back out. I'm going to show you another little trick. Okay. So we have those little yellow dots, right? Pretty cool. Dry. Just make sure she's going to dry between those two layers. Make sure we get oops, the center of that back up. All right. They're not, they're not bad. We like nope. them. They're okay. I'm going to put out a little zinc and I've still got some fluid white. So like when you have things that are glowing, but maybe they're like a distant glow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take some zinc and a little yellow. And I'm using this because it is a bit transparent. See how we're adding a little glow to them? But they're oh, wow. transparent enough. Pretty good. It's pretty okay. We could be there, but if I take my detail brush and a very delicate amount of my fluid white, and then I... Not the center of some of these glows, it will make them brighter. Now you've got that wonderful, wonderful kind of brightness. And I can come back with a little bit of my green and yellow. And some little dots of red. Ah, oh, that's pretty cute. It is. Look at that. Oh, uh, Suzanne, Suzanne Marie said, I would love to see the Sherpa paint the Ingalls cabin from Little House on the Prairie. I'm way behind on chat. I haven't been scrolling, <laughs> but I just saw that. I'm going to get a little bit of my gray on here. I'm just detailing out things to make them a 
a little uh, more considered. This really is beautiful. Everybody thinks out. this is looking really, really good. So, you know, you can take a scene like this, right? And you can, you know, do, do a landscape. You can do a, like a really like, this is the landscape and this is how we landscape, right? And that is super doable. Mm -hmm. Making sure that this has a nice kind of little line to it. But you can come back and add little bits here and there. They make a lot of difference. Yeah, they do. I'm glazing a little black here. I'm just kind of, this is glazing, it just knocks it back. That's the barn weather. Let the barn weather. Mm -hmm. Weather the barn. Ooh, I gotta weather the side of the barn. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just get a glaze on there. Make sure that I've got that right there. Weathering the side of the barn is important. Come underneath that window. Sharpen that edge. Just fuss. I know. I'm still fussing. I'm zhuzhing. Hmm. That's okay. Zhuzh. No, um, come back here and you can look and be like, if you want to put like when you're here and if you're like, you know, I want a few more like little trees as you might, mm -hmm. I think you can always come back and make sure. There's more peeking out. So even if you lost some. During the painting, that was a little zinc. Thank you, do. You can put them back in. As much as you want. As deep into wow. the hill as you want. But I think this is pretty good. And then the last thing you could do is you could flick snow all over this and it would be an active snow scene. But I think we've done a lot of that <laughs> this season, like a lot. Like, yeah, we've done a lot of active little snow. I'm just adding little pops of white. Sometimes you can make a foot step look a little better with a bit of. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just think, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty much there. I think I'm it there, really guys. I think I'm really there, guys. I would love to spend more time with you. It's a lot of fun. Um, you're if you're still to antsy it. to paint, uh, Angela Anderson uh, always has something cool going on. I don't know what's on tonight, but it's always something fun. Um, so you can just like click over and say hi. I'm going to give this a signature. Don't click away yet, though. Wait, just, just two seconds. We'll sign this. Don't sign it. wait so, yet. Huh? Gotta stick around till we're done. Yeah. And then... And then, then you can go out the places. Yeah. And That's then okay. absolutely should. And I'll, again, Monday is my mom. Mm-hmm. Ginger Cook Live. This is our... Oh, my gosh. I love this scene. I just saw thank it in you, the... Thank you, Carrie. Oh, it's such a oh, nice... Oh, thank you, Carrie. Truly another beautiful and inspiring piece. I look forward to painting soon, you guys, for your commitment to helping us learn to art better. I am, you know, um, I'm very blessed to get to grow up in art, and uh, I love being able to share that blessing with everybody, and I love being able to share moments like this with you guys. You know, you can make paintings. Oh, I love that with the footsteps. Can I just say again I how like nice it, it is, it is to sometimes nice. edit? When you're mm -hmm. out in the country, if you see a structure or a moment, like if you're out in your car and you look over and there's a rustic barn and the colors are great and everything, but there's like kind of a trash heap in front, mm -hmm. you can edit, get the picture, take the reference, use it this way, tell the story that you want to tell, and then, you know, edit out what you don't love. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put the oil barrels in there. <laughs> you don't have to be like, 
like truthful about it. My mom did a bunch of infamous like uh, uh, oil pumps. Yeah. And she put flowers all around them. And I've seen a lot of oil pumps and they do not have flowers all around them like that. But, you know, it's your painting and you can make it be what you want it to be. And that's important to remember when you're painting. Be good to yourselves. Seriously, be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the uh, painting this Saturday because we're doing the Christmas stallion. Yes. And he has a twist and surprise that you can't tell yet from the thumbnail. Ooh. I'll see you at a news overall soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.